Hey space friend, on the long list of basic repair tasks that I need to get around to, today we're going to fix the console system menu. We're going to do that using a rotary encoder and an LCD. We'll also use a custom made function and an interrupt service routine. Rotary encoders measure angular rotation. They have some similarities to potentiometers. Some notable differences are that potentiometers output a resistance value, whereas rotary encoders output a digital signal to determine the position of the knob. Rotary encoders can also rotate all the way around their axis without stopping, whereas potentiometers can only rotate part of the way. As you rotate the knob of a rotary encoder, it clicks, and each of these clicks generates a digital signal that the Arduino uses to determine the position of the knob. The number of clicks per rotation defines the encoder's resolution. More clicks means a greater resolution. Many encoders also have a push button switch that you can press down. Rotary encoders have pins for VCC, ground, the switch, DT or data, and CLK or clock. When the encoder rotates, a square wave is output from the data and clock pins. When the knob is turned clockwise, the data pin goes high and at the same time, the clock pin is low. When you turn the knob counterclockwise, the clock pin is high first and the data pin is low. Detecting which pin is high or low is how it determines if the rotation is clockwise or counterclockwise. For this project, we need 10 jumper wires, 9 of them male to female, an LCD, a rotary encoder, and a breadboard. First, we need to include the libraries and setup for our LCD. Then we set the variables for data clock and switch pins on the encoder. We're also creating int variables for the encoder and button value and states. We're setting a constant integer value for the number of options as 3. That's how many systems we're going to set up to cycle through. We then create an array called menu options set to the size of num options, so three. The strings inside the brackets are the three system values for the array. We're setting the selected option to start at zero. In the setup, we initialize the LCD, turn on the backlight, and set the cursor to start at the first row on the first column. We're going to print select an option on the first line, and then when we set the cursor to zero one, we're printing the selected option on the first column of the second row. Life support is at index zero of the array, so that's what we're gonna print first since selected option is initially set to zero. We then set the data clock and switch pins as input and set the button value to a high state. Then we attach our interrupt service routines. We're setting them to interrupt both the data and clock pins with the ISR handle encoder. I'll include a video at the end of this one about how interrupts work if you need more information about that. Change means that the interrupt will be triggered when it either goes from high to low or low to high. The handle encoder function is defined below the loop. It creates integer variables for encoder A and B, which is just reading in the state of the encoder pins. If these pins are equal to each other, then we're going to increase the encoder value, and if not, then we'll decrease it. This is essentially how we're determining the rotation. If A and B are equal, that means the encoder is in one rotational state, either they're both high or both low. In the loop, we're setting the button state variable to read in the state of the switch pin. If button state does not equal the last button state is how we're detecting if the button state has changed. So if the state of the button does not equal the last button state and if the button state is low, then we'll call the perform select action function. This function is also defined below the loop. It just prints the word selected on the first row of the LCD and then the selected option on the second row. So if we are pressing the button on the rotary encoder down, this function executes and the system menu will be displayed. The next if statement is saying that if the encoder value does not equal the last encoder value, so it's also just checking if the encoder state has changed, the selected option equals the sum of the selected option and the encoder value modulo num options. We're using the modulo operator here so that we only cycle through the number of systems that we actually have, which is three. Without the modulo operator, we may continuously increase that value past the number of systems that we actually have. Then within that if statement, we've got another if statement. If the selected option is less than zero, then selected option equals number of options, so three minus one. This is for the purpose of handling edge cases. In programming, edge cases refer to scenarios that are at the extreme ends or boundaries of what a program is expected to handle. Selected option less than zero is addressing an edge case and making sure that the selected option value doesn't fall below zero. An edge case in this code would be that if the selected option reached the lower boundary, so the first option, and then the encoder continued decrementing the selected option variable, it may reach a value less than zero. So this part of the code ensures that if that happens, it's gonna set the last available option index as a way to wrap around those menu options. Next, we're gonna print some space on the first row and the selected option on the second row. We then reset the last encoder value to the encoder value. Outside of that if statement, we also set the last button state to the button state. 
That was a lot of words. So let's walk through what the first few iterations of this loop would do practically. Select an option and life support will print to the LCD screen because life support is the first option in the array and the selected option is initialized to zero. Button stay and last button stay are both currently zero, but now we've pressed the button setting the value of button state to one. Since these two aren't equal, then the if statement will execute. If the button state is low, which it is because we set it to high during the setup so that pressing it down means that it's low, we perform the selected action, which means we write selected and the selected option to the LCD. Let's say we haven't rotated the encoder at all. It would stay at zero and the last encoder value would be at zero, so this next if statement would not execute and the LCD would continue saying life support as a selected system. We then skip down to setting the last button state to the button state. On another run of this loop, let's say that we have moved the encoder. The value is no longer zero, so it does not match encoder value. The selected option now increases by one, so zero plus one mod three for num options. This now displays shields to the LCD, so the second option in the array. We don't have an edge case, so the next if statement just doesn't execute. We print to the LCD the new selected option of shields, and the last encoder value becomes the encoder value of one. If we rotate the encoder again, then the encoder value increases and no longer equals the last encoder value again. So the if statement does execute and fuel will be displayed to the LCD. Now we can cycle through the systems until we get to the one we want to select, press the button, and the LCD will now display which option we've selected. Whew, well, that was a lengthy one, but we got through it and now I've got a console menu system again. And I got to turn a knob that makes a very fun clicky noise and that alone makes it worth it.